Hello and welcome to this first introductory tutorial to Idrisi. Now Idrisi has been around for some time, there was originally an MS-DOS version, then it moved to 16-bit versions of Windows, and there have been several different versions for 32-bit of Windows. Uh, the current most up-to-date version in August 2009 is Idrisi Tiger, but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to use a slightly older version as it's more in keeping with the different types that you will have access to at university uh, or available second-hand. Now Idrisi is produced by Clark Labs, uh, Clark University in the United States and it's rather unusual because it's produced by a number of postgraduate students who are also programming geeks so it's not actually a full-blown commercial package but it's become so popular that it's what we call industry standard. A lot of people actually use it outside of education. But because it's written in a modular fashion, each of the different functions is actually generated by perhaps a different student. It's cobbled together in a slightly quirky way, so you have to forgive it some of its slight peculiarities compared to other slick commercial Windows applications. And a good example of that is that what you won't find, is what you probably expect in a Windows application, is a file open or file save or file close uh, menu option. It isn't there. So you might ask yourself, well, how on earth do I actually open a data image? In fact, what you do is you set up what's called a data path. And you can either access that by going file and data paths, or you can click on the very first icon on the toolbar, which is what I'll do now. And the way that Idrisi does it is that you nominate a main working folder. And the purpose of that is that anything that you do from that point on with Idrisi, until you change it, of course, it will dump any outputs, anything new that you create, into that main working folder. Essentially, that replaces the necessity to go file and save each time. If you're doing lots of work with Idrisi, it can get quite tedious going file and save, file and open, and so on. So using this method means you don't have to do that. Once you set it up the first time, once you close down Idrisi, go away and have a coffee and come back, it'll remember your settings because it produces something called a project environment file, which you can see the location of it here on the top called default. And you can change that, of course, if you wish, but it will remember between sessions. So I've, lo I've actually decided on a temporary directory as my main working folder. And from that means that from this point on, anything that I generate, if I want to find it, it'll be here. It'll be in this location. It won't be anywhere else. It can't get lost. Now, of course, you could have several different input data files and they could be on a pen drive, on a hard drive, on a network drive. So you can have as many resource folders as you like, there's no limit. So I've actually just nominated one resource folder here, but you can add and remove them as you wish. And you could have one of your resource folders on a pen drive, and one could be on the hard drive. And the point is that when you're using Idrisi, when you access one of the functions, it gives you a list of images or a list of data and it treats them as though they were all in the same place. It doesn't distinguish between a hard drive and a pen drive, so it makes your life much easier. You don't have to go looking for something once you've set everything up here. Uh, then you can just click on OK and away you go until you want to change something later on. So you'll notice that there's this kind of logical interface along the top. There are all these most commonly used functions grouped together with the icons. So, for example, this little icon here called image calculator uh, is what you would tend to use for more advanced work which we'll talk about later on where we're actually doing some kind of mathematical functions with the images uh, or we might want to produce a histogram um, or produce an output file showing the frequency distribution of pixels um, or we might want to display an image by selecting display launcher so we can access the same functions here through the menu system but most of the commonly used functions we can just access uh, through these various icons along the top. So the first thing we do whenever we use a GC is what we've just I've just been through, which is to set up the data path. That's fine, I've done that. And then you'll notice that there are a number of different 
menu items here which logically contain various different functions that you'd use a GC for. So under display we've actually got a means of displaying an image, an orthographic representation of image, uh, something called media viewer where we can see a list of different types of data, um, symbol workshop where we can create different symbols for overlays and for palette files and for changing the way that data is displayed either by doing a stretch a histogram change or, or some other kind of manipulation. Most of what you'll be using will probably be under this menu item which is analysis and there are so many different functions here that it's actually split as you can see into different sub areas so we've got surface analysis, interpolation, uh, even different types of a particular uh, selection of interpolation so the the menu system can be quite convoluted in places but it's an attempt to try and logically put different groups of functions together um, and keep them separate from each other. Reformat is where you would actually be trying to change the format of the data or the format of the image. Maybe you would like to convert an image from one data type to another so that you can use it in another application. Data entry is essentially where we're using database functions so anything that you'd be used to with Esri products where you're using metadata and uh, SQL and database functions you would do here. Never be afraid to use the online help system. Um, there's actually quite a good help system which tells you all about the various functions of Adresi. Um, and if you get lost you can always go to their website or you can contact one of your tutors.